Once upon a time and many years ago, as all good stories begin, there was an emperor who ruled a small but pleasant kingdom. Very much like your average fairytale kingdom. Where the people were kind of happy and kind of carefree. And went about their business in an acceptable manner. Well, kind of. It was simply your average every day. Run of the mill fairy tale kingdom. Kingdom, he was quite average also. He was married to a nice, respectable fairy tale queen. And they had a nice, respectable teenage daughter. And a not always respectable woman, actually quite ordinary younger son. The emperor was just an average, ordinary fairy tale king. One exception, he was very fond of new clothes and he was always in search for the latest trend or fad. Shirts, trousers, vests, coats, ties. Boy, did he like ties! And you should have seen his shoes! He had slippers and sandals, high tops and oxfords, ballet slippers and sneakers! And we're the nicest fairy tale family you could ever find. Needless to say, this emperor was the trendiest and most fashionable of all the fairy tale kings. Yeah, but he did let his duty slip just a bit. Presenting the Minister of Army. Your Majesty, the troops are assembled for you to review. Oh, good. And what are they wearing? 
Why, they're uniforms, of course. The green ones? Yes. I've seen those. Besides, some new outfits have just arrived for me to try on. Another new outfit? But your majesty, the troops! Be a good man and go look at them for me. But... Be off with you now. Go, go, go. Fine, your majesty. Presenting the Minister of Culture. Sire, there's a new opera playing tonight and it would be good if you could attend. Oh, I would love to go. Sorry, old girl. I'm having a new wardrobe delivered and I simply must try everything on. But your majesty, it would be really good if... Not tonight. Tut tut. Be off with you. Presenting the Minister of Recreation. Don't have time. It's a busy day. The Minister of Commerce. Sire, the meeting, sir. Can't be bothered. Lots to do. The Minister of Pets. The pet show is. Not today. Have outfits to try on. The Minister of Education. The test scores are in. Yes. Go, Go on, on. On. The king is just too busy. And although it uh, appeared from the south first, it was soon to become a bit of a problem. For there were two tricksters who had heard of the king's interest in apparel and high fashion. And they were laying plans for a way to cash in on the situation. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, may I present two strangers who would like a word with you? They go by the names of Guido and Luigi Farabuto. Your Majesty, we are professional tailors. We weave our own cloth and make clothing to fit your every need. I'm Guido, and this is my brother, Luigi. We specialize in making the finest clothing in the world. We begin by weaving a cloth so fine. So delicate, so exquisite, so perfect. Not only are the colors and patterns grand, but the clothes are made so that they appear invisible to anyone without the wisdom to see. What Luigi is trying to say is that only the wisest in the kingdom can see the special material. And when we have finished weaving the material, we stitch and sew together the most elegant suit of clothes that the world has ever seen. That is, that the wisest in the world have ever seen. So, what do you think, Your Majesty? Well, I don't know. It does sound intriguing. Consider this, Your Majesty. 
Not only will you get the finest suit of clothing imaginable, but you will also find out who are the wisest in your kingdom. Well, that is very interesting. Can you go over that again? Now pay attention and listen to me. Only those wise enough will see the king's new clothes as they were meant to be on.、Uh-huh. And this is how it's gonna be. The threads are only for the wise to see. So let's get started with the spinning bee. Uh-huh. We're gonna stitch, 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 and so we're gonna weave up pie and weave down slow. We're gonna make the coolest rag you've ever seen. We're gonna cut, cut, cut in half. We're gonna gather in and tuck and trim. We're gonna make the slickest rag before us seen. We're gonna cut, cut, cut in half. We're gonna gather in and tuck and trim. We're gonna make the coolest rag you've ever seen. Now raise your right arm above your head. Lean to the left till you turn and red. Straighten up, look around and take a walk. Now snap your fingers, bend down low. Take four steps from heel to toe. Hop on back. You're doing the emperor rock. Now raise your right arm above your head. Lean to the left till you're turning red. Straighten up. Look around and take a walk. Now snap your fingers. Bend down low. Take four steps from heel to toe. Hop on back. Doing the emperor rock. Hop on back. You're doing the emperor rock. Hop on back. You're doing the emperor rock. Rock, rock, rock. Doing the emperor rock. And so the two scoundrels made a show of working at their looms, though in reality. There was nothing on them at all, and the emperor gave them a, gave them large sums of money to help them complete their job. They were given their finest silk and purest gold thread, which they put into their own backpacks, and then continued their pretend work at the empty looms until late at night. Don't let them know we're here. Okay. Don't push. They look really busy. Yeah, but I don't see anything. Look harder. Remember, wisdom. Okay, but I don't see. Where Where do I look? What am I looking for? You have to look very carefully at the looms. The material is very light and delicate and difficult. To see, but it's beautiful and it shimmers in the light. I still don't see. Well, you have to picture in your minds golds and pastels that are so beautiful that they only live in your imagination. Then look again closely, squint your eyes until they are almost shut, and think noble thoughts. And then, if you try hard enough, you will see the magical material begin to shimmer and shine with the most radiant of colors. If you use your imagination and you look inside your mind, you will see.
Meanwhile, the emperor was also becoming curious about the weaver's progress. So he called for the minister of fashion. My dear minister of fashion, you have a good eye and a fair amount of wisdom. Thank you, your highness. I want you to go to the weaver's room and see how much they have done. Yes, your majesty, I'll go at once. And so the Minister of Fashion, a person of excellent taste and common sense, went to see the weavers. Do you think we can pull it off? Of course, it's a piece of cake. A piece of cake? But their head's chopped off, we won't be able to eat any cake. Quiet! They won't suspect. But if they catch us? That won't happen. Trust me. We could be executed. Or worse. What? Oh, here comes someone. Look busy. What is this? I cannot see the least bit of thread on the looms, nor the least bit of woven cloth. Come nearer, so that you can get a better look. Does the design of the material please you? Aren't the colors beautiful? Dear me, I'm not stupid, but I can't quite see anything. Whatever I do, I must never tell anyone that I cannot see the cloth. Look closely. The cloth is light and delicate. The patterns are most elegant. The colors are exciting. They're the best that you can find. The weaver's extraordinary, strong and firm, you light and air. All you can imagine through the pictures in your mind. Oh, this is most beautiful. Well, Madam Minister, does it please you? Oh, yes, it is beyond description. It is stupendous. How did you describe it? The cloth is light and delicate, the patterns are most elegant, the colors are exciting, they're the best that you can find. The weave is extraordinary, strong and firm, you light and air, all you can imagine through the pictures in your mind. Oh, the patterns and the colors, simply fantabulous. I must tell the emperor right away. Thank you for showing me. You are geniuses. Your Majesty, Your Majesty, it's a marvel, it's exquisite, it's stunning. The days pass and the excitement of the Minister of Fashion's report died down. But the Emperor's interest began to grow about the new clothes until he could no longer wait. So this time, he called the Minister of Style.
you sent for me, your majesty. Yes, go and see how those Barabuto fellows are doing with the material. And take more silk and gold thread to them. They must be getting low. Yes, your majesty. Your Majesty? We're almost finished. Sorry we've taken so long, but we want it to be perfect. If Your Majesty will come closer, you will be able to see the weave better. The king bent over, his eyes studying the material closely before announcing confidently to the crowd. This is the most fabulous material I have ever seen. <laughs> In recognition of the excellent work on a magnificent suit of clothes of the latest design, I hereby present to the Brothers Verabuto the official Medal of Good Taste and bestow on them the title of Gentlemen Weavers. Thank you, Your Majesty. Cool. The Farabuto set up all night before the day on which processions was to take place. They had 16 light burning so that everyone might see how eager they were to finish the emperor's new clothes. They pretended to roll the cloth off the looms, and they were cut the air with their scissors and sewed the needles without any thread in them. As morning dawned, the king and his court assembled in the throne room to wait for the arrival of the new clothes. Presenting the Brothers Farabuto. Finished at last, Your Majesty. What do you think? Isn't the cloth magnificent? If Your Majesty will only be so good as to look at it, what splendid is done! What glorious colors! Why, I can't. That is, what do you think, my dear? Well, it's breathtaking. Yes, yes, breathtaking. And your opinion, Madam Minister of Fashion? Well, goodness me, it is, how shall I describe it? What would you say, Lady Minister of Style? Well, it is very elegant. Yes, elegant. Elegant. And stylish. Very stylish. Stylish. And fashionable. Definitely fashionable. Fashionable. And stupendous. Fantabulous. <laughs> Groovy. What? What? Here are your majesty's trousers. Here is the scarf. Here is the coat. The whole suit is as light as a cowhead. 
one dresses in it, one might fancy that one has nothing on at all. Nothing at all? How utterly humorous. That, however, is a wonderful thing about this delicate magic cloth. Yes, indeed. If your majesty would so graciously step behind the dressing screen, we will fit you with a new magical suit. quite ready. What do you think? Why, you look, you look, oh my. Do my clothes fit well? Yes, your majesty. All the hems are finished. Presenting his highness in his new suit of clothes. The king stepped out from behind the screen. The members of the court gasped and stared. <laughs> How splendid your majesty looks in your new clothes. And how well they fit. What a design. What colors. So you are pleased, your majesty? I am delighted. It is just what I imagined. My subjects will be very excited. Yes, your majesty, they will. But I must show them now. Minister of Fashion. Minister of the Army? Yes, Your Majesty. I want to show off my new suit. Start the parade. I love parades. Magic suit. Quiet! Can't you behave in public? 
but there's nothing there except his underwear. Imagination! Remember your imagination! Well, just look at him! Quiet! He has nothing on at all! <gasps> he tells the truth! See for yourself! He, he has, has nothing, nothing on at all! to an end. The emperor gave all of his clothes to the needy. Well, he kept a few outfits for himself. Yes, and he gave a lot more of his time to the people of his kingdom. The Farah Bhutto brother had disappeared during the parade and escaped near the country. They took their fabrics and money and opened a opened a swimsuit company where they were able to convince people to spend large amounts of money for very little fabric. Everyone in the kingdom returned to their fairy tale jobs and lived happily ever after. And the prince and princess never argued again. What? Okay, I guess that would be far-fetched even for a fairy tale. <laughs>